Ah, what's good, YouTube? Y'all all know it's your boy. Them boy crazy. Y'all all know it's your boy Royal to rob up in his mouth, man. I already know what's going on, man. I know it's your boy Cam Official. Anytime you see our face, you know it's time for another reaction. Man, this one here, one of the, the longest living beat, you know what I'm talking about? The, the beat between Gucci. Known to man. Gucci, Gucci and G's, you know what I'm saying? I don't need not lie. Look, let me tell y'all something. Like, I'm gonna tell you like this. They squash the beef, but I ain't squash the beef. Exactly. I'm just gonna keep it real, bro. Mm -hmm. They squash the beef momentarily for that money. For they the cash. be squashed. They don't fight even squash that. No. Especially Gucci. Mm -hmm. Especially Gucci. Timmy said, damn. Jeezy and Gucci Mane are the godfathers of Atlanta Trap. And the beef between these two icons is legendary. At one point, they was cool and dropped the hit song So Icy together in 2005. But the situation was so hard. <laughs> Boy, Ooh, that beat was so hard. In your long deadly rivalry that almost cost Gucci Mane his life. This is the true story behind the wild beef between Jeezy and Gucci Mane. Jeezy was born in North Carolina but grew up in Atlanta. He moved around a lot because his parents were separated. And he told XXL Magazine that his childhood was empty. Some of his older cousins told him about moving the streets of Atlanta. He saw the flashy lifestyle they had and wanted to be like them. But around age 10, Jeezy's cousins got locked up. Going back to his life in a broken home wasn't what he wanted. So, when he was 12, Jeezy moved out on his own and started trapping full time. Hey. By the time he started his record label, CTE World, in 1998, Jeezy already made a lot of money in the streets. At first, he didn't want to rap, just run the label. So, he invested hundreds of thousands of dollars into a studio and started scouting new rappers to sign. But after a duty signs of going to prison, Jeezy stepped in the booth himself and put the label's reputation on his own shoulders. He told Double XL in 05, I don't even want to be no rapper. The only time I'm That's rapping crazy. is when cause some of the best rappers be the ones who didn't even want to you in the first place. Rap? Well, but I ain't a rapper. I, I just, I just, I just I, hit the yoke. I just, I just stepped in the booth. I, I might have well, you know. Might have well, gone. Yeah, crazy. It's prime. In that booth, I don't walk around with no pad or no pen. I know I got love for this music because it's a hustle. His first album dropped in 2001 and set Atlanta on fire. All of his experiences in the streets made his music feel real and authentic. His ex-manager called his music the soundtrack of the streets. Jeezy was plugged in with clubs all over the city, so his songs got played everywhere. And his first two albums built up enough buzz that he was able to sign with Bad Boy Records in 2004. Around this time, Gucci Mane was just starting to pop off in Atlanta. Like Jeezy, he was in the streets way before he became a rapper. His dad was on the run for selling crack and heroin when he was born, and Gucci ended up following his footsteps. When he was nine years old, he moved to Atlanta with his mom and half-brother. At first, they stayed with someone his mom met at church, but later had to live in a motel after they got kicked out. They hood was full of crime, and it ain't taking long for Gucci to get sucked into the street lifestyle. He started off selling weed with his brother. In the eighth grade, he used the money his family gave him for Christmas to move up to selling crack. By the time he reached high school, he was a full-time drug dealer. Even though he was trapping every day, Gucci still got good grades in school and was a pretty normal student. But after getting robbed at gunpoint when he was 15, he started carrying a pistol and things started turning up. Gucci had beef with a local street gang called the East Shows Boys. It'd be so it was crazy so high every time I see that because so many folks be forgetting how uh, Nick Minaj, like when you first seen the shit with Gucci, mm -hmm. everybody always think Young Money and Lil Wayne. We don't get me wrong. Do not get me wrong. That's when she really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Came yeah. Nick Minaj, but damn. It be crazy, I be, sometimes I forget my name, I ain't gonna lie. Turning up. Gucci had beef with a local street gang called the East Shows Boys when he was still in high school. Apparently, most of the East Shows dudes was grown men, but Gucci was pushing big weight, which made him a target. After the East Shows Boys almost beat one of his friends to death, Gucci and his crew allegedly beat their ass so bad that they never had problems again. <laughs> While he was trying to balance school and stuff. It's so funny. Gucci and his crew allegedly beat their ass so bad that they never had problems again. While he was trying to balance school and selling drugs, Gucci was also getting into music. He started writing poems as a kid, then transitioned into rapping when he was just 14. At first, it was just a hobby, but after he was arrested for the first time, he decided to take music more seriously. Gucci ain't just want to be a rapper though. Like Jeezy, he created his own label and started signing his own artist too. But after he linked up with Zaytoven and dropped the track Black Tea, Gucci became the face of the label. At the time, Jeezy's manager was a dude named Coach K, who later founded Quality Control Records. Gucci Mane ended up tracking him down and introducing himself, and Coach K decided to put him and Jeezy on a track together. When Gucci found out about the collab, he called up Zaytoven, and the two of them got to work. Zaytoven is an Atlanta legend responsible for developing his iconic trap sound, but at the time, he was just a part-time producer who had a day job as a barber. 
He was cutting hair with Gucci, called him, and told him Jeezy wants to do a track with them. So Zayn told him at Gucci at his mom's house and made the beat in like five minutes. The song was called So Icy, and Zayn knew it was an instant classic. Gucci and Jeezy was both popping at the time, and this track made him blow up even more. Even though it should have been a win for both of them, rumors started going around that there was beef behind the scenes. Some said that Jeezy was mad at the song was going to be on Gucci's album instead of his own. Others claimed Gucci was upset with Jeezy because he didn't want to perform so YC live with them. Whatever happened, their relationship ended as quickly as it started. Around a week after so YC dropped, Jeezy took shots at Gucci. I wonder why. I wonder why they do. Why they did like that though? Why they put it on uh, Gucci John instead of Jeezy? Like, because it, it was, was Gucci dropping before him or like? Because I, I feel like they should him. never he did. They, they should just left that just a, a music video like. Or at least yeah, put it on both of these stuff. Yeah, when it comes to stuff like that, you know, with them labels, it'd be funny because, you know, songs got to get cleared oh, and yeah, all that type yeah, of stuff. So it probably like, well, you know, we can put it on his album, hey. but we ain't going to put it on your Damn, album. But, that would cause but, some commotion. You know, yeah, it would lie. cause some commotion. Because it's like, it's it you know, yeah, yeah, on your journey. It ain't like mine. Like, dang. But at the same time, it's like, shit. It's crazy. I don't know, and then it's like nine days when folks make a song, they don't even say featuring, they'll say and, you know yeah, what I'm saying? So they'll be like both of y'all. Yeah, song, both of y'all, or just leave it at that. Or just leave it at that. Yeah, because they can, they can kind of, you know what I'm saying? Cause some comfort with sales and stuff. Man, that's tough. This track, so called Stay Strapped, was called Stay Strapped. In the song, the Jeezy puts. Yeah, that's the one. Jeezy took shots at Gucci on a diss track called Stay Strapped. In the song, Jeezy puts a $10,000 bounty on Gucci's chain. Gucci clapped back with the track Round 1, where he downplays Jeezy's street cred and called him Big Meech's hey. The two of them went back and forth for a couple of weeks. Then, on May 19th, 2005, the situation went from rap beef to murder. That night, Gucci brought home a stripper from the club. While they was in bed, five dudes broke in armed with guns and brass knuckles. It ain't clear exactly what happened next, but Gucci ended up shooting and killing one of the men while the rest of them ran. Then, he allegedly buried the body in the woods behind a local middle school. A warrant was put out for his arrest, and Gucci eventually turned himself in and had to face charges for murder. He told the interviewer, I just want to let everyone know I'm not a murderer. I was upset. I was scared a little bit, but I had to do what I had to do. You gotta be a man about it. I'm not a bad person. I have remorse for everything that happened. It was clear that Gucci wasn't some cold-blooded killer looking for a chance to murder someone, but that ain't... Really, bro? I don't know, I'm trying to get up out there. Uh, what? Jam. And he just got out of jail. Cool. He went right back in. He went right back. <laughs> he wasn't prepared to defend himself. He talked about how the event gave him PTSD, but he still used it as an opportunity to dish Jeezy. The man he killed was a dude named Pookie Low, an associate of Jeezy who was signed to his label. While Jeezy denies being involved, Many believe he paid Pookie and others to rob Gucci. The murder charge against Gucci was later dropped because he acted in self-defense. But the murder only intensified the beef. But see, that's rappers. crazy Over though. Year, like that's what I don't, bro. That's why I say law is fact. Mm -hmm. Cause even if it's self-defense, you went and buried the body. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Like, and, and that's really where it would all come. Would all yeah, to. like a normal like oh who went on and got there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The most would probably got dropped to that was like manslaughter or something. But even like if you kill somebody on self defense and you leave the scene, you're going to jail for murder because you left the scene. Left the scene. You got to stay there until the police come. Oh, I'm like, man, this, 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 that man sitting third. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> he dissed Jeezy over the fell robbery on multiple tracks. On his song The Truth, he raps, Go dig your partner up, but he can't say shit. And if you're looking for the kid, I'll be in zone six. I know it's hard for you to sleep knowing you killed your homeboy. You let the son be a bastard, won't even raise your own boy. Mm. But luckily, the beef stayed in the boot. In 09, Gucci tried squashing the beef during a radio interview with DJ Drama and Jeezy. He called her truce and said, I just like to say, it's way bigger than all of us. I feel like the way the city's been supporting all three of us, they deserve this. It's about that time, man. We're getting older, growing, so let's do it for the city. The truce ain't last long, though. In 2012, Gucci said he wasn't rocking with Jeezy anymore because of his fight with Rick Ross. Jeezy clapped back and said, Man, everybody knows that boy is retarded. He has an ice cream cone on his face. Let's be for real. <laughs> After this, the situation settled down for a while, but the beef was still active. That's why it was such a shock in 2020 when it was announced that Jeezy and Gucci Mane was going head-to-head -head on Versus 
the web series created by Timbaland and Swiss Beats. Verses already featured several big artists like Alicia Keys. How much money you think the fuck made off that verse? Uh, Gucci, uh... No, uh, Swiss Beats and uh, Timbaland. Since they the ones who pretty much, you know, put it together and have been having everybody come on. Are you talking about like the, the whole, like, the whole, all the verse? Yeah. Like millions and millions and millions. Have to be. It have to be because, for one, there's like one of the, it, I think there's one of the highest screen things on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, Insta like, they screen this shit on YouTube, yeah, Instagram, they, they own yeah, they website. Like a little app on TV. Yeah, and, and all of them be getting millions of views on a live. Man, that's just crazy. This. I know they made yeah, some. I ain't even know they were doing before they made it. I never knew who. Uh, it's crazy. They didn't either. Dog and Nelly. They have a Gucci versus Jeezy was something different. Their rivalry is one of the biggest in hip hop history. And after 15 years, they was finally gonna be in the same room again. During the battle, they each played 24 tracks. Jeezy played his old hits for the most part, but Gucci ain't hold back on rapping about issues from the past. He even performed the truth. Referencing how he killed Jeezy's homeboy after he tried to rob him. After Gucci played the truth, the situation was getting heated and it seemed like something was going to pop off. But Jeezy took the high road and explained why he invited Gucci in the first place. When I said I wanted to do this shit for the culture, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to show you that the world care about what the fuck we got going on because we are the culture. You feel me? Me and you. Where we come from. What we've been through. Us. Me and you. And when I said I wanted to do this shit for the culture, that's what I wanted to do, nigga. I brought you here to show you the world care about what the f we got going on because we are the culture. You feel me? Me and you. Where we came from. What we been through. Us. Me and you. All these kids out here doing what the f they do because they saw what went on with us, dog. So this shit ain't about me. This shit ain't about you. Then they started listening to rappers who died recently like Nipsey Hussle, King Von, and Pop Smoke. At the end of the battle, they squashed the beef and performed so icy together for the first time in 15 years. Gucci told Jeezy afterwards, listen, all respect, I appreciate you for throwing out the olive branch, I accept that, no disrespect, it's all love. Hey man, listen, I respect, I appreciate you for, uh, for throwing out the olive branch, I accept that, no disrespect, it's all love. But not everyone was cool with how it all went down. Damn. After the battle, Pookie Loke's son, Left Side Ross, hopped on a live stream to call out Jeezy and Gucci. During the stream, he told everyone to let his dad rest in peace and revealed he was getting death threats because of the verses. Y'all stay the f*** out of my inbox. Leave me the f*** alone with that whole ass shit, cuz. Let my dad rest in peace, cuz. Y'all leave me the f*** alone with that whole ass shit. It seemed like he wanted to be left out of the situation, but he also threatened to snatch Big 30's chain. Catch me at Big 30 tonight. Don't snatch him out of state myself personally. Left side said he was ready for the smoke, but everyone else involved just ignored the threats and moved on. So after almost two decades of being at each other's throats, the two Atlanta legends killed the beat. But fans who was paying attention. It's so crazy though, cause they was uh, it was some dude broke down the video and stuff, mm -hmm. and he was like, uh, y'all try to act like these folks be real, this still ain't intense. And he was showing Gucci side. He showed you know Gucci mm -hmm. side and all them and stuff. And then you know everybody know them cause they rappers. Mm -hmm. Man, my head showed Jeezy side, bro. And he was like showing the people. Mm -hmm. Man, they were like he beat three murder charges. He beat this man. He beat this. He. I said, God, man, 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 I mean Jeezy. Oh, I said. Both of them folks had got some young regulars, my homie. That's it, they would have been bad. each other's throats. The two Atlanta legends killed the beat. But fans who was paying attention to Gucci wasn't surprised. Ever since he was released from prison in 2016, he's been working hard on turning his life around. Gucci's been in trouble with the law since he was a kid. Over the years, he's been out of jail for drugs, assault and battery, and other cases. In May 2014, he pleaded guilty to possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and was sentenced to three years in prison. But being behind bars might be the only reason Gucci's still alive today. He was addicted to a lot of drugs at the time, especially lean, and says he would probably be dead if he wasn't locked up. His time behind bars let him kick his drug addictions, get into shape, and read more books. Gucci dropped 90 pounds while inside and came out looking happier than ever. After his release, he made the most of his second chance and put his energy into more positive projects. He released an autobiography in 2018 and has gotten involved with the prison reform movement. But even though Gucci squashed his beef with Jeezy, don't mean he's done this in Pookie Low. He recently dropped the track Rumors with Lil Durk, where he rapped, DA dropped my murder, didn't have evidence to prove it. I think my house is haunted, yeah, by who? The ghost of Pookie. Now that Jeezy and Gucci are on better terms, fans want him to collaborate again. But only time will tell if the beef is really over what? or something else will come up that turns him into enemies once again. Man, they'll never happen. Alright, Jeezy, man, I do the two. Man, don't fool crazy, bro. Breathe. Oh, I said, I won't be surprised if YB do something with it. Mm -hmm. Do something with Jeezy around him, man.
gonna do a little, little hit. Man, but hey, though, that, that, that beef right there is legend. Legendary. Damn, I ain't doing That's real beef. Man, that's there. real deal beef. To be beefing, bro, that long for 11 plus years in counting, bro, that's crazy. I'm just being real. Because they still got beef. Mm -hmm. They just trying to sell it more because they, they grown. They get older. They get old and shit, but. I like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the rest, don't forget to subscribe. It's your boy and the boy crazy. And we